Good morning, fourth graders. Today we're going to be doing a fun Utah landscape project. To begin with, please get out your brown piece of paper to protect your work surface. Get a pencil and pull out the yellowish piece of paper from your art toolkit. Then to begin with, the first step is to write on the back your full name and your in-person teacher. Now you wanna take three fingers up in the top left and make a mark. You're gonna do the same on the right side and make a mark. Then you'll want to connect those two points with a horizontal line. This is called the horizon line. The horizon is where the sky meets the land. And if you recall, in our line study, there are vertical lines, horizontal lines, and diagonal lines. These are all straight lines. And you might notice that our horizon line is horizontal. Notice how the word horizon is in the beginning part of the word horizontal. Now we're going to draw some of the foreground. Make a mark about three fingers up on the bottom left and on the bottom right. Now another type of line are called curved lines. You'll notice that there's nothing straight about these. They're more organic. Now watch me first. I'm going to draw some curved lines connecting those two points on the bottom in the foreground area. Now remember, as you look at the, when we talked about curved lines, um, I wanna show you something you don't wanna do. You don't wanna make it look like a sonar, like where all the lines are so close together. Um, you want to give it more space, like this. Because if you make it too tight, it's not going to get the right look that we're going for here. You want to space it out, maybe jag it up a little bit, and give it a little bit of feel of outdoorsy over a cliff. Now that the foreground line is drawn, you need to complete the back part of the canyon. So about two fingers down on both sides, make a mark. And with the same sort of a curved, jagged feel, um, connect those two points. Now that we have the front and the back of the canyon, we need to fill in the middle part of the canyon. We're gonna put in three flattened, stretched pancakes, I like to call them. So just draw sort of some horizontal blobs and you want about three of them. Um, I don't want more than three, so you can make them go off the page, but we want about three, because remember the eye likes to look at even numbers. I'm gonna show you what not to do with these pancakes. I don't want a vertical blob. I want a horizontal blob like that, okay? Again, no vertical blob, horizontal blob. Now we're gonna add in some depth into the middle part of the canyon by using some vertical lines. We're gonna, on the outside part of the pancakes, you're gonna draw a straight vertical line down to the foreground on each of these pancakes. Next on the finger that juts out and that bottom foreground line, I'm gonna add some depth by putting a vertical line there as well. Next, we're gonna divide these tabletop sections into about three, three sections by drawing two vertical lines down in between the pancake and the ridge line. Again, about two vertical lines down in between the pancake and the ridge line. In this last, last section, just one. Now we're gonna add some more depth into the back canyon section. Again, we're gonna use vertical lines to do this. We're gonna draw six vertical lines in between the back canyon and either the, the stretched out pancake, if that's where it's reaching to, or all the way down to the front ridge section. Notice we made seven sections in that back canyon area. Now we're gonna decorate the foreground area. And I want you to think of Southern Utah, put in some rocks, maybe put in some um, cactus. Um, I'm gonna draw a bulb cactus here with some rocks around it. Um, remember to kind of think in the terms of what your eye likes to look at and as you're planning out how many items you have in the foreground. Notice I have about seven there. Sometimes people ask me, well, I wanna draw a cactus, but I don't know how to, or what it's supposed to look like. 
So here's one tall cactus idea if you're interested in having this type of cactus in your foreground area. And again, here's the bulb type cactus that I already drew in there. Now on to patterns. Patterns are when we repeat something like numbers, letters, shapes, or even colors. Now it's time to add some color. Get out your art toolkit and from the bag, pull out the bag full of acrylic paints. Grab your paper plate and paintbrush and a water cup with some water in it. In case you can't find your paintbrush, it should be stored in with your watercolor palette. Just take it out and then wrap the watercolor palette back up, put it back in. You will also need your Q-tips, so grab the bag with the Q-tips in them as well. At this point, you wanna pull out your blue, your brown, your red, your green, and you'll either have orange or this kind of peach color and some white. Remember, these are acrylic paints. They will stain your clothes, so take precautions. Now you wanna carefully unwrap the blue. Um, hang on to the tape and maybe just put it on the side of your desk or table. Um, that way you can close it back up later when you're done with it. In addition to the blue paint, make sure you also open up the white paint and as you do it, be careful and save the tape on the side of your desk as well. Now what I'd like you to do is grab some blue using your Q-tip and apply it in a horizontal side-to-side -side motion in the top half of the sky, just in the top half of the sky, side-to-side -side motions. The blue using the Q-tip, please. Now we're gonna make a lighter blue color. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the white and we're going to scoop out, using a new Q-tip onto the paper plate, we're gonna scoop out some of the white acrylic paint. Um, and you'll notice I, I get a decent amount out there. It's gonna go on the bottom portion of the sky. Um, and then I'm gonna go back and use my blue Q-tip and pull out a little bit of the blue paint. I grabbed a little bit too much here, so don't grab that much because you're gonna notice I'm gonna to have to go back and um, add some more white in. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this to the bottom of the horizon line and something that you may or may not realize that when you look at the horizon, it's always a little bit lighter than um, the sky above it. So that's why we're um, adding in this white to make a lighter blue to reflect that lighter color in the on the horizon line of the sky. Now to apply it, we're just going to take this lighter color right up against that original horizon line we drew. And again, we're doing a horizontal motion and then we're gonna fill the sky up with the rest of that lighter blue color using horizontal motion. Now I need to blend between the dark blue and the light blue, so I'm gonna go back and wet the dark blue area again um, with some of the darker color paint. And then I'm gonna grab a new Q-tip and I'm going to blend the two up and down, whatever, however you want it to look, but that's how you will blend it. You gotta, you know, move the two wet paints into each other until you're happy with what you see. Now that you're done with the sky, you'll want to pick up kind of the sky pieces and put the Q-tips onto the paper plate, close up the blue, close up the white, just clean up your space just a tad bit. Now it's time to get out the other colors, so unwrap your red, your brown, and whether you've got orange or the peach color, go ahead and unwrap them and set the tape off to the side. Now we'll just uncap the colors and you'll also want to have a paper towel for this part of the project. Um, so open up all the different colors, lay the lids off to the side, and then once you've completed this, grab your paintbrush and let's talk about proper brush holding. When you hold a brush, you want to hold it just like a pencil, 
Um, and this particular brush, you'll hold it in the black section at the bottom. You're going to hold it straight up and down to make be able to make straight lines. You don't want to mash it. You want to just kind of tickle your palm with it. You might try that as well. When we apply the paint, we're going to first apply around the edges and so outline it and then we'll fill it in with some vertical brush strokes. Remember it's the vertical brush strokes and the vertical lines that help give the depth of this canyon area. Now I'm going to select, you can choose whatever color you want, I'm selecting the orange flesh color first um, and I notice how I outline my first back canyon area and then after I've outlined it I will continue to fill it in with some vertical brush strokes. So outline the section first, and then once you've outlined it, fill it in with the vertical brush strokes. Remember this is acrylic paint, and acrylic paint will dry um, such that you can see the brush strokes. So make sure that these brush strokes that you're using to fill in this canyon area, that they are straight up and down. Now remember we learned about patterns. We're gonna use colors for patterns this time. So um, whatever pattern you want to make between using this orange and red and brown, um, go ahead and plan it out so that you know what the pattern is in this back canyon section. Notice I made little dots um, to remind me of what colors I'm going to place where. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in um, the other peachy orange section again outline it first and then fill it in the inside with your vertical brush strokes. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quick take my finger and um, kind of make a vertical brush stroke out of the little dots so that it doesn't dry just a little dot on there. Um, feel free to do that too if you kind of have a glob of paint on there. Now you just need to complete the rest of the areas that need to be this fleshy orange color or whatever color you started with first. When you're ready to switch colors, rinse off the color and make sure you dry it, your brush, really well um, with the paper towel. And then choose your next color. My next color is red, so I'm going to fill in now all the red sections. Remember to outline the area first and then fill it in with the up and down brush stroke motions. And then complete the other red areas in your back canyon section. Again, outline and then fill it in with the vertical up and down brush stroke motions. Now let's switch colors to brown. I'm just going to wipe off my brush since brown's such a dark color. Um, again, you simply outline the brown areas and you fill it in with vertical strokes. And then you just complete the last brown section. Again, outline and fill in with vertical strokes. Now we have the back canyon section done. We're gonna work on the middle of the canyon. Um, and you gotta wash your brush off and dry it really well. Now the thing to remember with this part is that you don't wanna put the same color next to each other. So in this area, there's red don't put red in those other two areas that you are choosing from. So you'd want to choose either the peach or the brown. I'm going to choose the peach. And again, I just apply the paint again to the outline first, and then you fill it in with the vertical up and down brush strokes. Now I'm going to work on the other side of that um, table, and I'm going to fill this one in with brown, because again, remember, it's right next to that red, and you don't want to have the same colors next to each other. So outline the area and then fill it in with the vertical brush strokes. Next, I'm going to move on to the other edges of the table areas. And I'm just choosing a color that isn't next to it. So this one has red next to it. So I'm choosing to put the fleshy color on. Again, outline and fill in with vertical brush strokes. And now if you're switching colors, remember to wipe off your brush and just kind of plan out the areas of what you want it to be and um, just don't put the same color next to each other. So keep with the same idea of outline the area first and then fill it in with vertical brush strokes. And whenever you're switching colors, wipe off your paintbrush. So 
So go ahead and complete this task. Remember the most important, don't put the same colors next to each other and outline your areas first and then fill in with vertical brush strokes. You may notice the little finger out jutting region there and I wanna make it that same flesh color. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it right now. Now I just have two sections left in the table plateau area. Um, so I'm just gonna fill in the outline and fill it in with the vertical brush strokes. So go ahead and finish up all the tabletop areas. Now using the brown, we're gonna go ahead and paint the rocks in the foreground section. Now remember these rocks are not um, necessarily vertical and they've got some shape to them. So as you're filling them in, make sure you give them the feel of a rounded rock. Um, and then go ahead and fill in all the different rocks. You may even decide you wanna add in a couple more rocks. You'll notice I do that. Um, so now's the time you can do that. Fill in all the brown rock areas, please. Now it's time to rinse off your brush and make sure you dry it well. Now we're gonna use the green. So uncap the green, put the tape to the side and make sure your brush is washed off and well dried, please. Now you just go ahead and apply the green if you happen to put a cactus in your foreground. Um, and again, remember you want to try to give it the shape of the cactus so you'll put your brush strokes in the same kind of direction. Like my cactus is rounded so I'm trying to make sure my brush strokes have a rounded feel to them. Okay, now we're done with most of the colors. We're going to go ahead and put the caps back on the green. Um, and we, we really want the body of your painting to dry, so we're gonna go ahead and take a little time to cap everything up and put the tape on each of the different colors that you've used. The only color you will continue to use is the brown, so um, you'll wanna put the lid on the green, the white, the blue, the red, and the orange or flesh color and go ahead and put the tape on it as well. Now let's talk about some of the landscape features that you might put in the background. Um, for instance, you might put an arch. You might want to put a pointy mountain. Or you might want to do kind of some more tabletop plateau looking mountains in the background. So this is your time to decide. You're going to be putting it, um, you're going to start it along the horizon line and go up into the sky with it. You're not going to draw it with a pencil. You're going to just go ahead and paint it straight on. So you need to make sure that um, the paint is dry. If it's not quite dry, blow on it a bit until you are convinced that it's ready to have additional paint put on it. Okay, I'm ready to embellish the background. Um, put some brown paint on your brush and then go ahead and draw on whatever type of feature you wanted to put in there. I want to put in some plateaus or landscapes. Don't go under that horizon line though. So try to draw that for yourself so you remember not to go into that yellow section. Go ahead and fill it in and paint it on as you want it. Now I really want an arch so I'm going to put that kind of more toward the off center area. Um, I'm going to start kind of the shape of it and then I'll just add in the, the various sides into it and just kind of form it with your paintbrush. You don't need to be worried about it, just do it. Again, I want to put something off to the right, so I'm going to make another mountainous table sort of feature off to the right. Um, just don't go below the horizon line again. You're done with the painting portion now, so go ahead and put your brush in the water and fan your completed artwork so that it can dry a little quicker. While it's drying, go ahead and cap up the brown and put the tape on it as well. And let's do a little more cleanup. Go ahead and put all of the colors back inside the bag that they came from. Um, and then when you've got them all in there, go ahead and zip it on up. Then go ahead and place that paint bag back inside your art tool kit and zip up your cotton balls. Um, and stick that back in your art toolkit as well. Throw away the paper plate and the q-tips as well. Now it's time to wash your brush and your cup really well with soap and water and then dry them and bring them back. Once you've got them back and they're dry, go ahead and put them back inside your art toolkit as well. Again, I can't say this enough, make sure that paintbrush is super duper clean and dry and then wrap it back up with your watercolors. 
While you're in your art toolkit, grab the black out of the permanent marker selection. We're gonna use this now on the project. Make sure your project is all the way dry though before you do any of this. Now what you're going to do is you're gonna take the black marker and you're going to outline all of the lines in this project. So for instance, anywhere you would have had a pencil line, you're gonna be going over it with this black permanent marker. Notice how I'm not afraid to turn the page to get a better angle when I'm drawing these black lines. Once you finish the canyon section, then move on to the foreground area. Don't forget all the little rocks and even the cactus, this would be a good time also to maybe put some spikes on it or put some little dots of rocks as well. Now for the horizon line area, you've got to be really careful in this area since that was the last area you painted. You might jump over the brown areas that you painted. And then once you're sure that they're dry, go ahead and finish off that horizon line. Um, and then once you're sure that they're dry, in the sky area, go ahead and finish outlining those landscape features. You might notice if I do end up getting the marker into a wet area, I can grab the paper towel and kind of wipe off the wetness. Um, again, you can also blow on your artwork to try to help it to dry quicker. But if you do get some paint on that marker, you might wipe it off into the paper towel um, and voila, you are done. Now clean up, go ahead and wipe off your brown paper with one of the paper towels, fold it up once you know it's dry and clean, and then put it back inside your art toolkit for the next time we have another one of these fun art days.